Welcome back everyone, I'm Sethiroth, and today we are diving deeper into the mod Spell Research. As the Bubbling Cauldron before me would attest, today we are going deeper into the alchemy side of Spell Research. Uh, we've already talked a lot about the different options that you have through your research journal. Creating theses, using them to create compose spell formulas, uh, crafting scrolls and tomes, and the number of things you can do from the, the nerd side, if you will. Uh, we've also talked about using your enchanting skill to break down enchanted and imbued magical items, all to gain experience in specific archetypes. So for example, if you go down to spell research and experience, you can get a list of the various uh, archetypes and how much experience you have in each one. And obviously, the, the higher the experience in each one, the more likely you are to succeed with those particular skills. Now, the reason I wanted to review that is just to let you know, al the alchemy route doesn't circumvent this, it feeds it, right? So if you go the alchemy route, you will be able to gain experience in all of these various archetypes uh, without needing to rest. That's the biggest perk here is that when you use alchemy to gain spell research experience, you won't have to rest afterwards. It doesn't create mental fatigue, which is really, I'm, I'm liking that more and more. <laughs> in my playthrough, uh, or in the last demo, I was doing a master level spell creation, and I had to rest for like 48 hours after making one master level item. Um, being able to circumvent all that waiting obviously has its appeal. But if you guys remember from my first spotlight, it was a little frustrating because I ran into a bug that locked me out of the game, basically. I couldn't click out of a certain window. However, I have figured out how to fix that, or at least get out of it if it happens. So, without further ado, let's dive into the mysteries of alchemy. So, with the cauldron, this bad boy weighs 100 pounds. So, either you carry 100 extra pounds or your follower carries 100 extra pounds, or you leave your cauldron at home base and you do your alchemy when you get home. Uh, you do have an alembic, but as you can see, it only weighs two pounds, and because of that, it's very limited in the uh, number of things it can process at one time. So if you're gonna be mass alchemying, <laughs> if that's even a word, mass alchemying needs to be done in your cauldron, whereas individual items can be processed through your alembic. So, I'll show you, just give you a little taste here. So if we use our Alembic, we can dissolve the items, analyze solutions, or mix ingredients. So if we start with dissolving an item, it reminds us that you can only dissolve small amounts of items at a time, which basically means one at a time. So let's go ahead and dissolve a bear claw and see where that gets us. So once you've selected to dissolve, you have to go back to the dissolve items menu, and then you will watch the bear claw be dissolved. Usually it takes a second, there we go. And we got Altadun Sagoria, which is right there. So when you break down items, they become these distilled versions of magic. And one thing that you can do with that is you just take your Alembic, we'll analyze the solution. Oh, I bet we have to jump into the analyze window as well. There we go, we've learned a small amount of apprentice spells uh, involving weapons. So we know that bear claws, when they are distilled, give us apprentice level spells involving weapons. Now, if we only did alchemy at this level, if we only grabbed alchemical ingredients and ran them through the Alembic, you could only get novice and apprentice level uh, archetype experience, right? You would never be able to get up to expert or master level. That requires the use of a cauldron and a few other uh, bits and pieces that we are going to cover here today. So let's see. So with the Alembic, I think there was one other menu I hadn't discussed with you guys. You have this other option called Mix Ingredients. Now what that is meant to do is, for example, we can combine two Altadun Sagoria. Remember we made three, we used one to gain weapons experience. And now we're going to combine two of them to create one Sahelia. Uh, I know this looks like complete gibberish. It, it, it prevented me from going into the system and just hitting help, typing in a name, and then creating a bunch of these infusion items because 
their names are just, I mean, they're, they're hard to track. They sound really weird. Uh, however, what you can be sure of is that if the, if, despite its name, if it requires multiple ingredients and it creates only one item, then it is going to be a higher level of magic, right? So we are going to combine those two and that will create uh, Altadun Sahelia, which gives us an Altadun Sagoria. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm getting a little tied up here. So this the way the system works, if I have four items, I could combine them to make two of a more concentrated item. But you can also reverse the process and take two of those items and break them down to make four of a weaker item. So you do have to keep track of what is creating what. Because I currently do have the Sahelia, but if I break that down, it will become a Sagoria. So we already did the Sagoria, so let's go ahead and investigate the Sahelia and see where that gets us. So we're going to analyze the solution here, and there we go. Let's see what that gives us. Back to the Alembic, back to analyzing the solution. Novice spells involving weapons. Okay, so Halia is actually the, weak, the weakest one. If you see a Halia, that's for novice level spells. And then Goria is for Apprentice. Um, so when you're doing this on your own, particularly with alchemy, obviously with spell research, there's 60 different archetypes. So if you had a notebook and you were tracking which archetypes you had learned so far, that would just be a quicker reference than hopping into the um, spell research experience table all the time. But that would actually be a really good idea for your alchemy because there's less... Uh, there's not 300 combinations of these Sagoria, Salhestia stuff. It would be tracking less information, but at least you can track which one's which, right? Remembering that Goria is for apprentice and Hestia is for novice allows you to at least pick the school of magic that you are learning. All right, so that said, that is the Alembic for you. This is all stuff that you can do while you're on the road because the Alembic only weighs two pounds. So you can dissolve spell ingredients, analyze them to learn from them. You can mix different solutions to either create new items or create more concentrated versions of those items. And that's all without the cauldron. And now we get to the cauldron. So the trick with the cauldron is you need fuel, right? It's a lot like a, a fire. You need enough fuel. And if you were going to melt metal, for example, if I was going to melt my iron dagger, I would need enough heat to actually melt the metal. So magically, what you use as fuel to, in essence, melt magical items is any ingredient with a weakness factor. So notice how bees have a weakness to shock. We're going to go ahead and add in uh, five of those. And then you have to go back into the add fuel menu to activate the process. And then when I click out, you notice I went from 17 units of fuel to 20. Uh, so going back into the menu afterwards, notice I had to do that with the Alembic. Uh, when I put in an item I wanted to analyze or I wanted to dissolve, I had to go back into the menu to activate it. Uh, don't forget that step. <laughs> when I first tried to add fuel, I just went through and like grabbed this, 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 and then I went back into the menu and nothing happened and I was super frustrated. Uh, but you have to have to actually go back into the fuel menu again or the dissolve items menu again to activate the process. I guess it's the way that the modder wanted to make sure you didn't accidentally imbue some or dissolve something you actually wanted to keep, um, which I guess is kind of nice of him, all things considered. Uh, okay, so with the cauldron, now we can, we've got 20 units of fuel, so now we can dissolve items. So let's go ahead and start with some of these ingredients, because now that we've got enough fuel, we can dissolve completely dissolve one of these. So let's see what we have the most of. We have a crap ton of Charis eggs. I don't know how many Charis eggs we can dissolve with only 20 points of fuel. So let's just do 20 Charis eggs and see where that gets us. Okay, now we're gonna go into the dissolve items and watch those get inhaled. There we go, now what did we get? Oh, hello. Okay, we've got lots of Gorias. So you remember with your chorus, what, all those different words, beta, beta, mis, ayamis, lata, those are all different types of magic, right? So those are different archetypes. And if you notice with charis eggs, let me pop out of this menu real quick and go back in here. All right, so with charis eggs, they have 
uh, four different a bit for uh, magic effects, right? So I believe each one of those is a archetype. So when you get your solutions, uh, Altadun is an archetype, Ayamis is an archetype, Bella Tadun is another archetype, right? So there's one for each archetype. And then Goria is the level of concentration, right? If you remember from our previous experiment, Gora is apprentice level. So the next thing then, you know what? Let's keep uh, dissolving until we have lots of those uh, options. And then from then on, we'll do some mass brewing and see what we can create. Now, Bleeding Crown has a lot of weaknesses to fire and various effects. So let's go ahead and use that to create some more fuel. We were at 16 and now we're at 23 again. Very nice, very nice. Uh, you know what? We could just do more Chorus eggs. The reason I wanted one item that I could dissolve a lot of is because then you get the same solutions over and over and over again. And in order to create like a master level potion, you it, it requires a lot of distillation, a lot of initial small ingredients that you have to process in order to get what you want. So I'm, I'm kind of second guessing myself right now because it is easier to show you the distillation process if we don't if we have lots of a few things instead of a mod mediocre amount of a lot of things so let's go ahead and do the alembic and start all right so now we can get into mixing ingredients so we've got a couple of options here we've got lots of gravia a couple of helia so remember the helia is a weaker distillation of its gravia version so uh, the gravia let's see all right, so we have Gorias. That's that's what we have in stock. You can either break down a Goria to make two Betamias, say, Helia. The Helias are a novice level archetypes. The Gorias are apprentice level, which suggests that Gravia is probably a death level. So let's, there we go. So we've got some Gravias. Uh, let's see, so you can use, it takes three Gravias to make a Baun. Baun, I believe, is expert level. So, um, yeah, so the thing is, we have to have enough Gravias to make enough Bounds to make enough uh, Master, whichever one is Master level. I think it's called Adonis. Uh, but let's hope, I think we have enough Goria to make this work. So, if we do three more of these, then we've got six Gravia. That's enough to make. Uh, two more bounds. So let's... I'm assuming that the rule of three is applied here, right? Because it's taking three Goria to make a Gravia. So I assume it takes three bounds, which are expert level, to make one whatever the master level version is. I think. Uh, but I'm not seeing it. Okay. So we got... Sahelia, that's not it. Gravia, nope. Um, Beami sa gravia. But we just made more bounds. Maybe we'll make more bounds and then call it good, I guess. So the bounds require gravia. Make another bound. There we go. Okay, so there's your Adonai. So let me just make sure that I've got Bound and Gravia, Gloria. We already did Hestia. And make sure that I've gotten Adonai in stock. I think I already made one, but okay, let's just be sure here. So we'll make three more Gravias so I can make another Bound so that I can make another Adonai. And then we should have all of the, the full assortment, right? So we've got, there we go, Adonai, Bound, Goria, Gravia. We already know that Hestia gives you uh, novice level stuff, so we're not really gonna worry about that. All right, so let's go to the Alembic. We'll go to um, Analyzing Solutions. So the Analyzing Solutions is when you're done mixing and you want to extract as much magical knowledge as possible from, from the, the solution. So, for example, if we learn from Gravia, let's see what that gives us. We go back to Analyze Solutions, process the Gravia. Okay, so Gravia is Adept Spells. Okay, very nice. And it looks like 
the Beltadun, no, this is Beltayamis. Beltayamis is creature magic. And that was Gravia, so let's check out Bound next. Hop back into our Analyze Solutions window. Uh, expert level, okay, so Bound gives us expert level spells. Very good. And then we've got, that leaves us with Adonai. So let's go ahead and check that out, analyze that solution. I bet you it is master level magic. There we go, master spells involving creatures. You'll also notice that because this isn't necessarily your character figuring out the contents of a spell or figuring out how to create a new spell, he's just kind of distilling the solution and then looking at what its properties are, there isn't a long wait. Uh, when you're using theses and you're making theses and you're trying to make new spells, there's a lot of wait time, there's a lot of resting because you use up your magicka as you go it as you go through the process. And there's none of that here, which is really cool. And I like that if you get a lot of a single item, you can pretty quickly, as you can see, I was able to distill master level spell experience uh, from fairly early on in the game. I just needed a ton of Chorus eggs. Uh, keep in mind, you need like 25,000 master level experience to start making master level spells. So don't think that this is overpowered, that you can just grab a bunch of Charis eggs and start learning master spells. It'll take a while for you to unlock enough experience to actually create master level spells. So the next thing I want to look at, I've been reading through the guide on this, and there suggests that the you can... You know how we were grabbing individual items and then researching for experience? Supposedly, if you just do them en masse, then you gain a lot more experience all at one time. So we're going to try that. Technically, the Alembic has a weight limit. So I have a feeling that 191 Aemis Sagloria is going to be probably going to break it, but hopefully not. We'll see what happens. No. Okay. So we haven't been kicked out of the menu. That helps. Uh, analyze solutions. There we go. Large amount of apprentice spells involving a life. Very nice. So the way that works is it is multiplicative. And what I mean to say is that if I learn if I learn from one Altitude Sla Gloria, I'll get like five units of experience. If I learned from ten of them but one at a time, obviously that'll be five, ten, fifteen, twenty. If you learn from ten of them simultaneously, the way I did by just taking in a batch of 191 items. Uh, it will be closer to like 500, right? So it mult it's exponential. The lar larger the number of ingredients that you're analyzing, the greater the bulk of experience that you will learn, but it will be limited to that school of magic. Remember, Goria is, uh, I want to say, adept level spells. Uh, so you'll gain more experience, but only in that archetype. Whereas if you were to mix ingredients, you could distill Sagoria up to the master level potion uh, the master level ingredients and then gain more experience that way so it's kind of depends on what you're trying to focus on as your character which archetypes you're trying to unlock as quickly as possible and i do like that it has that level of what's the word i'm looking for versatility because you can pick uh, whether you want to pick on a current version that you're doing whether you want to focus on just unlocking new apprentice level spells because you're that level or if you're trying to gather as much experience as possible in all of the different venues of magic and all the different archetypes. All right, so let's add a little bit more fuel because I've just did a lot of distilling. Uh, it's any ingredient with a uh, do, 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 weakness, there you go. So weakness to magic, weakness to poison, weakness to fire, all those will work. Uh, one interesting thing to note when you are doing this Potions also work, but it has to be a potion that's based on a weakness, right? So when you're doing alchemy and you see like aversion to fire, for example, that's a really good one. Let's go. So we're at 15.8. We add aversion to fire and that bumps us up to 29.8. Now, if you remember, I was putting in like 30 Charis eggs and I was getting maybe 10 points of fuel out of it. But one potion gave me like 15 points of fuel. So potions are a lot more concentrated but you have to make sure it's a potion that is based off of a weakness, right? So if it's a potion that provides weakness to shock or weakness to poison, that will make a really efficient ingredient for, for your cauldron, for fuel. And you might say, well, why, why do I need so much fuel? Because I noticed you could distill, you know, 30 charis eggs without any trouble. 
The challenge is that when you want to dissolve uh, these bad boys, they require a lot more fuel. So this is, these are guys you might remember from Enchanting, where you break down each item into different subtypes and try to learn what they all have to do with each other. But what we're going to do, we're at 29 points of fuel, we're going to distill this one guy. Three, two, one. There we go. And that gave us some Sagoria. Goria, I believe, is apprentice level magic. And let's see. So our fuel is now at 24.8. Okay, so that actually took less uh, fuel than I expected. So that said, let's uh, throw in two this time and see if see how many of these we can dissolve without running out of fuel. Because it will give you that stupid warning menu that's hard to click out of uh, if you overtax your cauldron. And can we get rid of the sword blade as well? Okay. So we've got a Sila here. Molag Asila. I do not know what a Sila, what level, because we already covered everything. Oh no, is it different for, oh, I bet it is. Okay, let me, all right, we're going to analyze a solution real quick. I have a, I have a theory. So for example, notice we had Goria, Gravia, Belimaya, Adonai. There was, there was a, a level of five of these. That was based on which school, uh, how the level of difficulty that the archetype was for. I have a nasty feeling that that relationship has different words for every archetype. So I have a suspicion that Darun Sasila, Sila is going to be a level of difficulty, like novice or apprentice or expert, and then Dunrun is going to be a new uh, ingredient or um, archetype. So that said, let's have a look and see what we're looking at here. Master level spells involving magical traps. Okay, yep, that, uh, that will make this a little more complicated. So the reason that makes it more complicated is this relationship between making Hestia into Gravia into Gloria is only going to work for the Bella, to Bella Tadun. No, no, for the Bella Tadun. Bella Beta Yamis. See, see, I, this, why, this is why it took me a while to prepare for this video, because I can't just look up Goria, for example, in the helpline and then grab all the Gorias, because apparently that name is different for the different schools of magic. Uh, yeah, so the, the mod developer really went all out on making things complicated. <laughs> Which is all well and good, because, oh, oh, wow, okay, yep, there we see. So we got Mafre, Malari, Lata, although I noticed a lot of these are still using the same Goria, Gravia, Diction, oh, okay, yeah, we still got a Sila there, interesting. Yeah, so it will take a while for you to get used to whichever words are the schools of magic that you want, and whichever... Uh, well, the first word is your school of magic, like Bella Tadun. I believe that was creatures. And then the last word is the, the, the level, the skill level, right? Apprentice, novice, expert. So keep that in mind when you're dinking, dinking around that that is how this works. Uh, let's see, how are we looking in the fuel department? We're down to 10 units of fuel. So let's go ahead and add in some more ingredients that have a weakness feature. Uh, creep cluster will work fine. I believe Salt Pile also has weakness. And yes, it does. Now, if I had an Alchemy Lab nearby, I could combine those two. Um, but for now, we're just going to chew through these real quick and get our fuel up and then uh, continue dissolving more items. So that one got us Ball Sahelia. Helia, you'll remember, is novice level. And uh, we got a lot of novice level stuff. Good to know. Uh, but that did get our fuel up to... Wait. Oh, crap. I dissolved them. Ah, dang it. Uh, that was the wrong menu. So it is important to note that something that, per per that gives you that weakness effect that you can therefore use as a fuel... If you're all fueled up, you can also break down those same items um, as regular ingredients. Like, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Uh, so I do also like that you are not limited to these items are fuel, these items are for study. You can actually study things 
Uh, so can I get a little more? Weakness to frost. That'll be useful. Gotta be able to find something useful here. And frost salts will be good too. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and break those down into fuel as well. There we go. Let's see, what does that put us at? Oh, I'm way behind on the menu. <laughs> it's coming. It's thinking. Uh, I guess we'll just dissolve an item while we're waiting. I'm sure we have enough fuel to do one of these. Uh, let's see. We're going to go for the imbued eyeball. I mean, you got to wonder what kind of magic is lurking inside an imbued eyeball. I, I know I am. I don't know about you guys, but, but I wonder. Uh, let's see what we get from that. Oh, am I so far in the... <laughs> we're going to have to wait for the thing to catch up. All right, so we got some Garlas Sagravia. Carrying too much to run. Yes, I know. Uh, and we... It only took 0.1 fuel. Okay, that's good to know. So it looks like when... If you want to calculate how much you can break down without having to reload, it looks like... So the, the eyeball was 0.1 in weight, and it took... 0.1 in fuel, so maybe it's straight across. Let's see what happens if I use a 10, if I break down a 10 pound item. I have 24 units of fuel. I break down a 10 pound item. Let's see how much fuel is left. Come on. There we go, 14. Okay, all right, so it's a direct relationship. If I have 14 units of fuel, it means I can dissolve 14 pounds of material. So if I were to try and do the Warhammer right now with only 14 pounds of fuel and it weighs 15, uh, it wouldn't work. It would give me that stupid... You know what? I might as well show you. It's a bug. You'll, you'll see. All right, so I'm going to try and dissolve it. But you do not have enough fuel because it weighs 15 and I only have 14 units of fuel. And this is where I got stuck in that bug last time that I hate so much with a burning passion because it kind of locks you out of the menu. So the way you get out of this, I'm currently using a PS4 controller plugged into my computer. Uh, I'm a web developer full-time, so it really bugs my hand to use the mouse after using it for 40 hours a week for work, so I switch the controller. So all I got to do here is unplug the controller, go back to my mouse, and then after I click out of this window, I hit, I think it's F, nope, R, there we go. And that allows, that kind of breaks the cycle and puts me back out of the menu. And then I can just plug my lovely little controller back in, and... There we go. And oh, I should not have been in a menu when I made that. When I did that. Okay, there we are. Okay, so let's say we want to break down that 15 pound item just to see what's what. Uh, we can go ahead and dissolve. Oh, wait, did I pick? I think I picked the wrong menu. There we go. I want to add fuel. There we go. All right, got a little turned around there. Uh, let's see. So we need more weakness. All right, weakness to magic. That'll work fine. Do, 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 do. Weakness, weakness, weakness. Resist magic. That's not it. I guess I need to learn a lot of these things. I use the... Wow, okay, I've got a lot of eating to do. Thankfully, this time, I was testing this myself earlier to get up my skills and figure out how to work all this before I put myself on the spot. And I accidentally gave myself werewolf blood. <laughs> And then I shapeshifted in the middle of the store, and lots of people tried to kill me. And I was like, ah, well, all right. Glad I figured that out before I had an audience. I can pretend like I know what I'm doing. All right, so there. So that should help. Let's go ahead and go back to adding fuel. We should be able to get a lot more uh, weakness to anything stuff. Uh, you know what? We might as well start further down, because I haven't gotten this far yet. Weakness, weakness, weakness. There we go. We've got some taproot. Weakness to shock. That'll be useful. Not going to worry about were werewolf blood because I don't want to change. Got a nice little white cap. Uh, let's see. Anything else we've got a lot of? I, I used the power of the command line to give me some other stuff in higher quantities, if you notice. Like 64 char sakes did not come from me just in invading... Oceans and oceans of Falmer hideouts just for one video. I'm dedicated, but I'm not that dedicated. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and process all of these into fuel. Let's see where we're at. So that should bring us up to a manageable level. 
once the uh, rollout in the top left has actually caught up to me, it has not. So we're just going to toss caution to the wind and pray that a half dozen ingredients was enough to allow us to melt down the steel warhammer head. I have a feeling we'll be just fine. Let's go ahead and dissolve that bad boy and see what's in there. One of the things I want to see is if the weight of the object determines the volume of ingredients that you extract from it. And wow, I learned a lot of stuff very quickly. <laughs> oh, we're still back in that menu. Uh, and I, I mean, I can try to just go back into my, my list here and try and theorize, you know, what's new, but, uh, Bayamis, Suggler? I don't remember having this, this many Bella Tattoons or Bayamis. I don't know. Oh, we've got more stuff down here, too. I wonder if it's the Lata Sagoria. We might have gotten that. I don't remember that one. Um, anyway, so that is the way to use the cauldron to distill or extract ingredients. Obviously, you can either leave it here or take the cauldron. Uh, I do not know if it will stay. So for example, this is not my player home. I don't know what would happen if I left the cauldron here for a week and then came back and expected it to still be here. I, I don't know. So just don't quote me on that. <laughs> but definitely set it up in your player home or have a follower along that also uses it. And then you can go through and I was going to break down more of these, but now we've got oodles and oodles of ingredients already so i guess we will last but not least we're going to go into mix ingredients because there's a few more options here that i can show you guys so for every single one of these uh remember bowen is expert level goria is apprentice gravia is adept helia is novice adonai is master uh, and then there's a couple other oddballs here that defy clarification but anyway, so another thing you can do is create elixirs. So elixirs actually, as you can see from the ingredients, are more of these archetypal distillations. And the thing with the elixirs, see, I need a Garla Sasila and a Arden Sasila. It looks like, yeah. So it looks like with the elixirs, they're the same concentration, meaning it will be three ingredients of the same difficulty, right? So like three expert level distillations. And then when you have a bunch of those, you can create a concentrated elixir. Um, I don't think we have an elixir ready to go, but we have an awful lot of ingredients. So let's see if we just do some mass brewing, if we can uh, take care of that for ourselves. We don't want Halia, those are easy. Let's see, I want to try and find one I recognize. The Sila, no. I mean, the Halia might be, I don't think we have any Karan Ibramis, though. Yeah, so for the elixirs, it's kind of going to be just a process of distilling a little bit of everything and then uh, just randomly coming up with the right, constant, right combination. Because we need Beta Yamis, Aigi, and Reller. I have a Reller right here. Okay, so that's going to distill the Reller. Yeah, creates a bound. And then, let me see if I can, where was I? Yeah, so Reller E Molag Sahelia. So I should be able to break this down then. There we go. Okay, so now we have a Halia. At least we should, unless I missed something. Rasahalia, Rasahalia, where'd you go? It changed up the menu when I was trying to... Oh yeah, there's our Sahalia. So next we need Bayamis, Sahalia, and Karan Sahalia. So Karan... Oh, there we are. Okay, so all I really wanted to do was create an, an elixir. Um, but we're going to need more Reller Sagravia. Because I'll need at least two. There we go. Okay. I was hoping that I could at least get an elixir made for you guys so you could see how they work. So an elixir... Come on. Wait, where are you? 
It should be, oh, right, right, right. So it's either, is it, there it is, mild elixir. Okay, so an yeah. elixir is a new ingredient, okay? It works just like your regular ingredients for alchemy. However, you'll notice it is the same effect four times over, right? And it has the same, it, there's mild, moderate, concentrated. It has the same step up from novice to master as the spell archetypes. If I were to combine this in a potion with a Ravage Stamina ingredient, um, the effect would be twice as powerful as your regular potion, right? So if I took two um, poisons, two poison ingredients, I want to see, so like Namira's Rot, that's usually a good, no, I should have a good poison here somewhere. I don't know why, but my brain is going blank right now. Anyway, so if you had two regular poisons, and then for your third ingredient, you used an elixir of damage health, your poison would be almost twice as powerful, right? So it really puts your alchemy on steroids. But the downside, obviously, is, I mean, you saw the amount of hoops I had to jump through just to create one elixir. Like, it requires a little bit of practice to figure out what is used to create what. And I guess what I like about it is... When I first looked at this, right, the whole, every, it was just about getting up to Adonai, so you could get master level spells, right? It was, your Halia wasn't worth anything because you had to turn it into a Goria, and then a Bound, and then an Adonai, and the Adonai was what you were really after. However, for elixirs that then give you more powerful ingredients, uh, you can actually take, in this case, a Halia, right, which is novice level stuff, like it's, it's cheap, right? You might not use it else, otherwise. You can actually turn that into spell ingredients of a certain effect and then make your potions that much more powerful. Uh, so that's another element, another aspect of the alchemy functions in spell research is you can actually create potions that are twice as powerful. Uh, now obviously you have dilute elixirs and then I believe there's also concentrated. And then, okay, so this is another fun little thing. You can also use these to create other rare ingredients. So for example, we can make fire salts, salt, yeah, fire salts and frost salts um, based off of bounds, which remember are expert level ingredients. We can make a Chartox uh, bound. I have no idea what that's about. We can make glow dust by combining more bounds. You can also make ink for yourself so you won't have to buy any ink. Um, this is actually really helpful for me. I didn't know that you could do this. Uh, this is actually something I will be investigating for my player, the playthrough I'm doing right now, because I'm trying to create an outsider type character that relies on mainstream shopping options as little as possible. So being able to make your own ink and make your own paper uh, is going to be vital for him in that role. Uh, and as you can see, there's more ingredients, some more mild elixirs. Let's see what else we can make. There should be more stuff at the bottom. And then you've got your potents. Those are very strong. Uh, more relers. Uh, like, I was wondering where those were. They so, oh geez, so the Sasila. Wow, that's worth a lot. That's interesting. Okay, so remember, I got confused earlier when I saw Sila. I was thinking that Adonai, because it gives you master level skills, was the highest tier, and then I was worried that Sila was part of a second tier. That is not the case. Sila is actually a souped up version of Adonai. I don't know what comes after Master, but apparently Sila is it. So keep that in mind. Silas are very rare, very valuable. They are part of the same process from Hestia to Goria to Gravia to Bound to Adonai. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can also get rolls of paper from various, uh, if you combine firewood with some of these different uh, ingredients. And you can make salt piles, void salts. We've got more weak elixirs here. And then let's see, anything else at the bottom? Nope. Okay. So I hope you guys, I hope that gives you guys a more comprehensive view of what you can do with this mod. Uh, you will notice I did a video earlier on how to make money with your mod spell research. And at that point I was focusing almost exclusively on just making uh, magic stuff, right? So scrolls, tomes, stuff like that. But it looks like if you get up to Sila, that's worth 500 gold right there. And this character here doesn't have any speechcraft leveled up. And I didn't have to buy anything to actually make this, right? There, that didn't require any paper or ink in order to create this process. So you can actually sell all of these items as well 
uh, in order to uh, make a living. And I don't know, hmm, actually there's a shopkeep downstairs. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of my extra weight. Oh, good, I, oh good, I'm not burdened anymore. Okay, can I, are you, you a shopkeeper? You are, good. I just wanted to see if she will take, interesting. So she'll only take two of these ingredients, despite the fact I have like a crap ton of them. So let's hop over to, let's see, I think White Run will be fine. I want to talk to Bellathor and see if you're, there we go. Because Bellathor, you have to go for him to sell theses. Um, theses are a miscellaneous item. Most of your spell vendors, uh, Farangar, College of Winterhold, they won't take them. Uh, they'll take spell tomes and scrolls, but that's it. So if you're going to make money off of theses, you have to use like your pawn shops, your miscellaneous type shops. To make that work. So my thought is, I bet that because these alchemical distillations are also uh, miscellaneous items that you have to sell them to Bellathor, not to an alchemist. And again, I kind of, for immersion standpoints, tell myself that the reason for that is they don't like you infringing on their territory. You're delving into the secrets of alchemy that they're trying to make a living off of. So they don't want to reward you for that. Uh, but let's have a look before we wrap this up. And there we go. Yep, we can sell all this stuff. Wow. Okay. So uh, when you're at lower level, uh, your Gravia is only worth three. Gorias and Hestias are worth one. Um, Sela is worth... Uh, now, by worth, I mean this is what Bell... Bellathor is willing to pay at my crappy level of speechcraft. So obviously if I leveled up my speechcraft, got a couple perks in it, I would be making more money. Uh, but because this doesn't actually require paper or ink or a quill, you could do a, you could make a lot of money just by selling your distillations. And, and I know it's a smaller amount of money per transaction, but the fact that you don't have any starter costs means it's all profit. Uh, so that is that is another way that you can make money with the Spell Research mod. Not bad at all. Okay, so I believe that is uh, everything that I wanted to show you guys. I mean, we might as well head back over to Morthal and see if my cauldron is still there, because I completely whoa, whoa, forgot whoa. about that. Watch the magic. Watch the magic, dude. <laughs> Watch the birdie. Bye. Uh, oh, I need a town. Do, 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 do. Don't I? Wait. Where's Morthal? Did I skip it? I might have skipped it. It's not... Oh, it might it's a minor city. There we go. We're just going to hop back over and see where my cauldron is, because if I want to do a nice little end screen shot for my video, I mean, what's more end screen shot for an alchemist than brewing over a cauldron? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, let me get into town. This happened again last time. You know what? There. I will not be killed again by my own misgivings. <laughs> All this over a quill. Really? Who, who sends hired goons over a quill? Makes no sense. Oh, Alright, we're gonna see if my cauldron's here, if Senor kills a lot is still chasing me. Yep, yep. Alright, well, if he's gonna give me trouble, I might as well give you guys a good show. So, best way we're gonna do that is right here. I mean, if you're going to cage an alchemist, don't cage an alchemist if he's holding, you know, shape-shifting ingredients. And yes, I did turn on, you know, god mode, so bear that in mind. And I'm sorry, Lammy, your your utility during this demo is, uh, your, your services are no longer required. But, you know, I'm on, a, I'm, I'm on the clock here, got to wrap up this video, so you won't see me eat anybody. But, uh, yeah. That is spell research in a nutshell for uh, your alchemy users. I hope this cleared up any questions you might have had from the initial showcase, uh, as well as how to make money at it, how to enhance your potions, make them stronger. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite feature of learning spell research through alchemy? Uh, mine is you don't have to rest. No mental exhaustion from learning magic through alchemy, which is just really convenient. Uh, also, I've been, one of you guys suggested the, was it, Alduin Consumes the World? It's like a timer for the main quest. Uh, you have a certain amount of time, and if you don't beat Alduin by then, everyone dies. 
So I was thinking of adding in that mod, but then resting for every spell would bring Alduin's win closer. No, no, it, so using alchemy kind of becomes very necessary. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm going to deal with this. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your favorite part is. Oh, I already said that. I don't fight and talk at the same time very well. I'm working on that. This, this character was made purely for demo purposes. He is not a god of war. And yeah, this is going to take a while. Anyway, so I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Uh, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I think I'm going to actually shapeshift again and then eat these guys. Because, uh, yeah, it's one of those days. So feel free to uh, hang out. Check out another one of my videos. I hope you guys are enjoying these mods. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye.